Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Sanir Pashalic of WBBG. Welcome to our second video on the country series of the Western Balkans. Today's country is Bosnia and Herzegovina. In this video, we're gonna talk about the economic and business side of Bosnia and Herzegovina, why it might be interesting, interesting to actually invest and do business in Bosnia. But before we continue to the details, I want to thank our partner for this video, Bih Brojke. They provided us with the data that we used in this video from Bosnia. And they also provided us with some nice graphs, tables, and diagrams that you will see later on in this video. Now let's get back to Bosnia. For this uh, video, I brought in somebody extra to help me out. He's a financial expert. Uh, and uh, his name is Yusuf Tepic. He knows a lot about the banking sector, finance, and all that. But I don't know where he is right now. I do know something that might work. Let me try this. This is Yusuf. Yusuf, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you very much, Sanir. Um, as Sanir mentioned, I have a background in finance and economics. Um, I have worked for more than six years in the banking sector. Currently, I'm employed at a, a Daimler subsidiary uh, where I uh, do the work of an asset analyst. Um, in this video, I will uh, tell you something about the financial figures of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I will tell you something about GDP, uh, import-export and the foreign direct investments. See, I will see you guys in a minute. Bosnia and Herzegovina is the heart-shaped country in the middle of the Western Balkans. It's uh, bordered to the north and to the west by Croatia to its east by Serbia and by Montenegro. The country has a small strip of seaside near the town of Nelm. It stretches for about 20 kilometers. Furthermore, the country is situated in the southern part of the Dinaric Alps. It's very mountainous, very foresty. There's a lot of rivers and lakes. There's a lot of raw materials as well. The country has a continental climate with generally hot summers and cold winters. The southern part, mainly the Herzegovina region, is going to be more arid and enjoys more of a Mediterranean climate. The, co uh, the country in total has about 3.5 million inhabitants and the capital city is Sarajevo. The currencies are tied to each other, which gives investors some certainty about the future. As it stabilizes the exchange rate between Europe and Bosnia and Herzegovina. This provides long-term predictability for investors and people who want to do business within Bosnia and Herzegovina. Furthermore, since 2013, the GDP is showing growth rates. And is, since 2015, is, the growth rates are actually above 3%. Uh, this, of course, doesn't mean that, our, that there aren't any challenges left for the Bosnian economy. However, it does show some economic growth in the country and it also holds some promises for the future. Regarding foreign direct investments, um, actually the last couple of years it has an average of 370 million uh, euros. Another interesting fact uh, mentioned in a report in 2018 from the Bosnian Foreign Investment Council is that 70% of the investors that have invested in Bosnia would invest again. Even though the business climate isn't ideal yet in Bosnia, it is an indicator that the general attitude towards investment and doing business in Bosnia is positive and has a positive outlook. Check out the website of WBBG for a further analysis on foreign direct investment in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The link of the article will be shared in the description of this video. Sanir will tell you now more about interesting sectors of Bosnia and Herzegovina and doing business with these sectors. Sanir. So let's get back to the sectors of Bosnia and Herzegovina. For this country, the last couple of years, the most interesting sectors for doing business and investing in have been manufacturing. This includes automotive industry, this includes woodworks, this includes metals, garments, all of these things. The second major sector is, believe it or not, energy. Bosnia and Herzegovina is the only country in the region that exports energy. We'll get back to that in a, in a minute. And then the last sector is, uh, is the classic, basically, tourism. Now let's start off with manufacturing. Manufacturing is Bosnia and Herzegovina's second largest sector. In 2017, it was the second largest value-added activity of the country, only second to the services industry. Now, as you can see in this graph, it is a quarter chunk of the GDP. 
Bosnia and Herzegovina has a tradition in manufacturing. With before the war in the 90s, it hosted a couple of big Western brands such as Volkswagen and Marlboro. But Bosnia also had some of the largest manufacturers of former Yugoslavia, names such as Energo Invest and Shipad uh, ring a bell with a lot of old, older generation. The latter, Shipad, was Yugoslavia's largest wood exporter and the largest employer as well. They employed about 84,000 people and contributed 30% to wood exports of the former Yugoslavia. And today, Bosnia is rebuilding its manufacturing traditions, with the largest of these subsectors being automotive, metal manufacturing, wood, and furniture. Bosnia has been producing increasingly in these sectors over the past decades with more and more Western producers, Western brands investing in their country, its manufacturing capabilities. The country has been delivering metal parts, furniture, textiles with increasing numbers over the past years and the numbers are only growing. Similar to other countries in the region, the population of Bosnia is well educated, they're young, they're relatively competitively priced and there is a tradition of manufacturing. Not only that, the fact that it borders the European Union means that a lot of the, these export tariffs that usually apply from, for countries outside of the European Union, they don't apply to Bosnia and Herzegovina. It means that you can easily export from the country or import from the country, the way, depending on the way you want to look at it. And it also means that there's a lot of knowledge and experience with the EU and the EU with Bosnia. So if you're looking for a competitive price advantage for manufacturing somewhere close to home, Bosnia and Herzegovina is definitely a country you should consider. As always, I'll leave a few links on this topic, manufacturing, in the description so you can get a head start with your own research on this topic. We do invite you and encourage you to do so. There's a lot of potential. The country is relatively, relatively undiscovered yet. Now let's move on to the next sector, energy, electric power. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Bosnia and Herzegovina is a net exporter of energy, and it is actually the only country in the Western Balkans region that exports it, its energy. And this is in part due to the large proportion of hydroelectric plants in the country. They, they make up the majority of electricity production, and with the rest being generated by coal burning. The country in total has a capacity of about 16,000 gigawatt hours of energy production. This is a huge number for a country that is relatively small in population. There's about 3.8 million Bosnians and Herzegovinians, so that's not a lot. There's a lot of capacity there. In 2018, the country's lawmakers have adopted a framework of energy strategy that's going to lead the development of the sector from now up until 2035. This should give foreign and domestic investors a lot more clarity and stability and security on their investments in the country when it comes to the energy sector. In addition, this has also made a start in bringing Bosnia and Herzegovina more in line with European standards when it comes to energy production and consumption. So this plan, this framework, also includes a long-term goal to gradually switch from coal to more renewable energy sources such as solar, such as wind, and there's already been um, investments and construction of the first solar farms and the first wind farms in Bosnia and Herzegovina with more planned as we speak. The first wind farm was placed in 2018 in Mesihovina, in Herzegovina. For the short term though, the country is planning to in expand its coal burning production to increase its energy output, increase the energy they can provide and sell and export and use domestically as well, of course. A number of foreign investors have already put their money in, a, in some expansions and new plans around the country. However, as I mentioned earlier, about 40% of the country's power production comes from hydroelectric plants. And due to the many, many rivers and mountains and valleys in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also the wider Western Balkans region, the Balkans and Bosnia as well, therefore, has become somewhat a point of interest when it comes to energy production for Europe. Because of this potential, 
it can mean that in the long term, the countries of the Western Balkans, Bosnia, Bosnia of course included, become a very good option, a backup plan for the European Union to get their energy from as industry increases, as the population increases, and so on, and so on. Because of these reasons, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country that is still very much, very much open for sound investments in this sector. So if you're looking to do business, if you're looking to invest, energy is definitely something to look at. As always, I'll put some links in the description so you can read up on what's going on in this sector. And finally, let's talk about tourism. Now, tourism in Bosnia and Herzegovina, just like with all the countries in the region, is one of the fastest growing industries of the country. It has been growing for about 15% annually. And in 2018, 71.8% of the tourists coming in were international tourists. So the sector is booming. Coincidentally, 2018 was also one of the most successful years for tourism yet with one and a half million people coming in to visit the country. According to the World Tourism Organization, Bosnia and Herzegovina will have the third highest rate of growth in tourism between 1995 and 2020. Tourists visit Bosnia and Herzegovina for several reasons. They visit the cities such as Mostar, Sarajevo, Banja Luka, look at the old architecture, the old culture and history that is riddled all over the country. They go hiking. There's, uh, there's the Sutjeska National, National Park, which is one of the two remaining ancient forests in Europe. And during the winter, you can go skiing on various locations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. In 1994, the country hosted the Winter Olympics with the Olympics being held in and around the city of Sarajevo, which is now the capital city of the country, as you recall from the introduction. And as you all know, Bosnians are very welcoming. The World Economic Forum estimated that the Bosnians were the eighth welcoming people to tourists in the world. Now, of course, as the number of tourists grow, the size of the expenditure for tourism to facilitate all those tourists and to provide them with all the necessities and the fun and the place to sleep and food and eat and, and all the activities, the investments grow there as well. And tourism has been growing in Bosnia. It has become one of the most significant sectors for the country, within 2018 representing 10.2% of the GDP. And as it looks right now, this growth will continue. It's been growing for 15% annually for the past couple of years. So this might be a very interesting time to look into investing into tourism in Bosnia and Herzegovina. You see a lot of companies actually doing really well and growing in, in this period of time. One of these opportunities tied to the touristic sector is real estate. You can get real estate cheaply relative to neighboring country Croatia in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And a lot of investors are actually buying up places that are already existing, turning them into bread and breakfasts and hostels and all these things and popular centers, old centers or near the sea or nice locations around the, around the country. Fortunately, the Bosnian government sees the potential of this sector so they're boosting touristic endeavors they've developed strategic goals to boost and implement to actually guide this sector to grow it over the next couple of years this should give investors and business people alike a bit more stability and security when doing business with tourism in bosnia so in conclusion with all that is happening the growth that doesn't seem to be stopping the time to actually look at investing or doing business in the touristic sector in Bosnia and Herzegovina is now. So take a look. As always, links in the description. That's it for now. Make sure to check out these sectors. We've left all these links down in the description. Bosnia and Herzegovina is definitely a country to look at. So make sure you do. If you need help with doing research, reaching out to anybody, finding the right leads, let us know. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think. You know, we'd love to improve our message and help you out better if we can. And uh, make sure to follow us on all our other social media channels. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.